My name is John Papa. I own a small pizza parlor. Some of you may have gone to in the past. <laughs> we make awful pizza. <sighs> and it's called Papa's Pizza. What'd you think I was going to say? Uh, so thanks for having me and Dan and Ward and everybody else here tonight. Appreciate that. Appreciate y'all coming out. Thanks for having us here and setting us up. Uh, I wanted to show you something a little less Angular-y and a little more about what you can do with your editor with Angular. I saw when Dan asked earlier, half of you raised your hand that you use VS Code. What's wrong with the other half of you? <laughs> Just kidding. So I'm going to show you how you can use VS Code and some things that it can do that are really cool that I think you'll like to use, whether you're using Angular or any other technology, quite frankly. Uh, and it'll build on some of the things that Dan showed you as well. Uh, if you don't use VS Code, other editors can do some of these things too, but um, maybe I can convince you to use it because I think it's pretty darn awesome. So again, my name is John Poppy. You can follow me on Twitter. If you like me, if you don't, my name is Dan Walleen. <laughs> Anything you may want to see in tonight's presentation uh, later, you can get from these links here. If you want to take a picture, uh, go ahead and grab that. These links will bring you to pretty much everything. I'll show it at the end quickly again, too. The first one is VS Code. The second one is free money from Azure. You can sign up for Azure and get free stuff. Uh, Node extensions that I'm going to be showing today, Angular extensions, the marketplace for VS Code, and then a bunch of shortcuts on the keyboard that I use on a Mac. Those are the ones I'm going to be showing. And if you use Windows, I'm sorry, but there's also links at the bottom for those ones. And yes, I work for Microsoft. <laughs> Windows is good, I just choose Mac. So this whole talk is about kind of what can you do with your editor? How can you become more efficient with your editor? Because quite frankly, I don't think anybody here would deny that if you're good with your tools and you use good tools, you're going to be better at what you do. You're spending less time trying to figure out what the syntax was or memorizing, what was that, Dan, a 50-character Docker container ID that he asked everybody jokingly to remember? There's stuff like that that you just don't want to fill your head with. So what can you do with your tools to make your life easier? So first of all, if you're using VS Code and you haven't downloaded the Insiders version, I highly recommend it. The Insiders version comes out monthly, sorry, daily, and the stable comes out monthly. So the daily one is the Insiders. I have been using Insiders for over two years since it came out, and I've had one failed build that I couldn't use, which I then just went over and used the stable. And I use this every single day of my work life. It comes every night with new features, so you'll get to use the newest features the day they come out. And sometimes you don't even know they're there, and they just light up, and it's pretty cool. And I'll show you some of those today that are really neat. The Insiders Edition, it's free, uh, it's stable, and you don't have to do anything other than click a button to get it. So how do you get VS Code? You run up to the link up here to go grab it, and once you get it, it takes about half a minute to download. It's about 50 meg. But the first thing people always ask me about when I go to co uh, conferences is, I'll do this really cool talk on Docker or something else, or NGRX like Ward did, and this really cool stuff, or dependency injection. And the first thing they'll say to me is, John, that's a really cool font. What is that? Or what color is that background? Or how can I do that thing over here? So first thing I recommend is you go up and you check out the different icons and themes that you can get for VS Code. I happen to write my own. You can create your own, too. Mine happens to be called Winter is Coming, yay Game of Thrones. Uh, and there's a light version and there's a dark version. So with a theme, you can customize the fonts, the sizes, the colors, all sorts of cool stuff that you can do inside your apps. I like, happen to like to use the material icons as well. Material icons are really neat because what you'll see is you'll get little icons for the different kinds of files that you're using inside of VS Code. How do you change your theme? Hit Shift, Command, X on Mac, and you're going to be able to change your theme to any theme you'd like to change. When the new features come out, they load them in this thing called the Interactive Playground. Inside of VS Code, there's a feature you can get to right from the Start page or up in the menu called Interactive Playground. And this is a great place to try out the new features. So new things come out. Sometimes you hear, hey, there's a thing called Log Points that came out, or there's a multi-cursor. What the heck is that? Right? I can only type one thing at a time. What they'll do is they'll put them in the playground and they'll show you how to use them and you can actually use it in the playground. So it's not just a video showing you something, you can actually go in there and try it out yourself. It's a great way to learn and keep all the new features up to date with VS Code. Emmet. Emmet's awesome, it used to be known as Zen Coding. If you're in HTML and you want to type long things of HTML like this, 
I can actually use the Emmet syntax and it automatically will fill in all the HTML for you really, really quickly. Super helpful. And there's actually a new feature since I recorded this video of when you type the Emmet syntax, like right there that I'm doing, over on the right hand side, it'll show you a preview of the HTML that's going to be generated before it actually generates it. So if you like HTML, anybody here like the web? One person? Awesome. <laughs> By the way, I have a rule in presentations, and you guys have already broken that rule for me. During a talk, you can only ask two questions at most. Why? Because the first question, everybody raised their hand. And those guys ruined that for me already. The second question, half the room's tired. The third question, they're not going to raise their hand unless there's free money involved. So, Prettier. Do you guys like to fight with your coworkers about spacing and commas and syntax and column widths? Yeah. You know you do. <laughs> if you like to fight about it, ignore this part. If you don't want to fight about it anymore, you can use Prettier inside. There's an extension inside of VS Code to use it. It'll format your code. If you don't like the way it's formatting it, like Ward hates the way I format code. He likes one column width for everything. Just one big long scroll bar in his code. So if you don't like the way it works, change your Prettier file and you can use whatever styles you want. It's great though for avoiding fights on Teams. I like to also set it up to copy and paste and save. So meaning when I paste or save, it automatically formats for me. How do you get there? You can use that funky little key, which is only on a Mac, uh, with Command F, or you can actually go check out the Windows keystrokes to do that. External terminal. Some people like an external terminal. You can open it up from the current folder by doing Shift Command C. Opens up a terminal, and you can run your favorite little programs like the Matrix. Really easy to do inside of VS Code. So if you like iTerm or some other terminal, just whatever folder you're on, you hit this keystroke which is in the upper right, and you can automatically get a terminal outside of it. Some people like the terminal that's embedded in VS Code. For those people, you can hit Command and then tick, open up a terminal, and run the same thing inside of VS Code. Or you can run your favorite Cowsay NPM package on the right-hand side. So you can run both of these side-by-side -side inside VS Code with the embedded terminal. How do you open up a second terminal? Two ways. One is by hitting this little button right there. If you hit that, it'll split the terminal, add a second one. And I think you can add up to 16, although I don't know why you'd want to, or how you'd visually see them all. <laughs> or you could just hit Command and then Slash. So let's go show this one for a moment. So we're inside of a project here, and I've already got something running over here. I don't want it to be broken, so inside the terminal, I hit Command and then Slash, and boom, I get another terminal over here. So down here, now I can say, all right, I can do cow say, cow say, hi, ward. And I get a little cow that says hi to ward. Yay. Yay. Do you all know about the cow say NPM package? Well, now you do. You must go download cow say. It will say anything you want. There's no profanity filter, no. You know, there's always one of them in the room. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> seriously? All right. Or you can do things like, uh, I would do the C matrix thing. You can run the matrix over here. All righty. Node debugging. One of the best things about VS Code is you can debug really, really easily. Uh, most node projects, by the way, right out of the box, all you have to do is hit F5 or hit the green button. It'll automatically figure out how to set up the debugger and run it for you which is fantastic. So you can start the debugger by hitting F5. You'll then get this bar at the top of the page, which lets you walk, continue, step into, step out of, step over, restart, or stop. And once you're in there, you can also set things called column breakpoints. Let's check this one out. It's really neat. So we'll kill the cow. Sorry, cow. Moo. Thank you. Got a couple of people there. All right, and I think my app is running. I'm going to press F5. That little bar is up top. That's the sign that it's running. By the way, in my theme, you'll notice something here. I'm going to kill this. Look at the bottom of the page, how it's purple. Now it's blue. Because I often couldn't see the visual indicator, I made my theme change colors when it was debugging. So it's purple debugging, blue is not. Lots of themes will do that. Really cool stuff you can do. Now, I know this one's happened to be running on port 3001. There's my heroes. One person saw the message, awesome. 
Uh, and then here we, we broke into the code. Now notice I'm on a callback. It's a callback statement. What would you normally do if you wanted to inspect the JSON inside of a callback? Put some brackets in there, stop your code, do an enter line, restart the debugger, shoot yourself in the head, and then rerun it, right? Not with VS Code, but wait, there's more. So inside of VS Code, if I press run, it's going to continue. What I can do is put my cursor on the JSON, and I can say, if I can scroll down, there we go, add column breakpoint. What does that mean? I don't know. But it'll add a breakpoint inside of the JSON over here. So when I press run now, it stopped right there, and I can hover over that right there, and I can inspect, change values, I can run over the debug pane, see variables, explore what I want to do. Fantastic feature right inside there. No longer do you have to put the little curly braces and the enters, and uh, it just works, which to me is fantastic. Have you ever wanted to shoot somebody? Not shooting's a bad thing to say these days, sorry. Have you ever wanted to throttle somebody who was adding a bunch of console logs to your code? And then they go to production and there's like 8,000 lines of console logs? Yeah, that's, that's me. Well, there's a new feature that just came out a couple weeks ago called log points. What this allows you to do is you can set uh, log messages inside of VS Code without messing up your code. So let's say every time somebody puts a hero, we change the hero. I want to know what the hero's name was. So here's the application. We're going to go look at Ragnar, good old Ragnar, or Ivar, Ivar the Boneless. That's awesome. So when I change this with an exclamation point, I press save, I want there to be some kind of a point back here which tells me what happened. So what I'm going to do is in the put, I'm going to come down to like line 35. I'm going to right click, add a log point. In the log point, I could do a message. All right, so with that message, I want to type in the name of that object, which was what? Updated hero. And yes, you do have to spell. Dot name, like this. And I'll even put like a bunch of these little things there so we can see it. And then hit enter. Now you get this little diamond. If you keep getting five of those, you get a flush. So once you get your diamond in there, there's a log point. Now we look down at the bottom of the page, and we run through here, and I go back to Ivar the Boneless, and I'll add something in here like, laugh, Dan, darn you. We do that. Now at the bottom of the page, notice we have our log point in our code without messing up our actual code. So it's a great way to get messages in your code while you're debugging without stopping it. Notice I never stopped the debugger or anything. You're still running, you're doing everything you want to do, and you can inspect lines of code. Pretty cool feature. And this just came out in the stable version. It was only in the uh, insiders for about a month and a half. Yes? So, would you be naming a lot of our logs? Is it like the name of the Uh, good question. So I think what you're saying is if I wanted to log out the entire updated hero, would it let me do that? Not yet. So like if I did that, it would do object object right now. Yeah, they're working on that to get that to do a true console logging type thing. But yes. Yep. Yeah, and this is why you want the insiders too, because like as they add those things, you'll get that like five, six weeks before somebody else. And who doesn't want to get a feature and brag to their neighbors? Cool. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do with the debugger. The debugger is pretty cool. JavaScript type checking. Uh, if you use JavaScript and not TypeScript, one of the options you have is to take advantage of finding errors. Like we all know Rick there was supposed to be a const or a let, but let's say you didn't catch that. There's a lot of code. If you stick at, at, sorry, slash, slash, ts check at the top of your page, just a simple comment, you're now telling VS Code to use the TypeScript compiler to look at your JavaScript and evaluate it. So it can instantly find, oh, look, you forgot a let on line 10, and you forgot the const on line 3. So you can simply do that with a single check with at ts check. You can also set this for your entire app, app-wide as well, with a user setting. JSON IntelliSense. Who likes to figure out if there's new versions all the time in their JSON pack or NPM packages? You know, you never know. You like it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so you can type in CoffeeScript. I don't know why we're using CoffeeScript, but we are. And then right here, you can put in the version. 
And if you hover over it, it'll tell you if it's outdated. It'll also tell you what the latest version is. Uh, very nice so you're not accidentally typing something the wrong way. And it doesn't just work for package JSON. Anything that's got a JSON schema, it'll work for. If you use Angular, for example, the Angular CLI JSON file has a schema, and it'll automatically use IntelliSense for you. Settings Sync, probably the single most important extension you can get for VS Code. Once you configure VS Code the way you want, your font sizes, your, your, um, excuse me, your, th your themes, uh, your editor sizes, your tab sizes, two or four spaces, all the things that you want, you don't want to have to redo that again. And a lot of people have more than one computer, like your home computer, your work computer, whatever. So what you can do is your settings file inside of VS Code, you can save those up into the cloud using this tool called Settings Sync. It's an extension that's free. You pull it down, it's community driven. And all you do is it pushes it up into GitHub into a gist. By default, it's a private gist, so it's only your stuff. And then all you, you get a gist key, that ID on it, and then you go to your other VS Code, you install the same extension, and then point it to that gist. And every setting you have in one VS Code will automatically go to the other one. Fantastic for teams, too. Like at work, if you all want to use the same extensions, it'll remember your extensions, your user settings, everything. Really, really cool. Yes? Key bindings, too. Yes. Let's go check it out. Let's see if John's a liar. That's what you're really saying, right? <laughs> no, so very cool. Right here, I can do command, comma. And here's my settings over here. You can tell I've got quite a few settings going on, right? So I don't want to have to remember all those all the time. Over in the extensions, which is this weird little block thing over there, I don't know what that is, but that's the extensions icon. If you click on that, no, don't hide it. And I scroll down, they're alphabetical, there's the settings sync. It's been downloaded almost a million times. You can install that. Once you install it, all you do is you simply go to the command palette. If you don't remember anything from today, remember this. Command Shift P. When you don't know what to do in VS Code, Command Shift P will open up the command palette. That's where you can type in any command. Now, what might you think I would type to use the Settings Sync extension? Sync? Good guess. What if you didn't know it was Sync? It was Settings. It's partial matching. So the command palette is what? Command Shift P. I can now say, OK, upload those sync settings. It's going to upload them. When it's done, it'll pop up a little message down here. And let's look at what it did. So in here, it uploaded the key bindings, the Docker file, all my snippets. It removed no extensions, thankfully. It added all of these extensions up there as well. So now everything I'm using, you can use. And there's my gist. Memorize that, and you can have all of my settings. <laughs> Mine's shorter than Dan's, though. So how did I just maximize that panel? Have you ever seen your terminal get really tiny and you're like, I can't really read that, and you only want to see it bigger, like for a moment? You could do this, right? That's kind of annoying. There's a Command Shift P for toggle. Oops, go back up there. Whoa, that's way too big. <laughs> toggle maximize panel. If you click on that, watch what happens. It puts it up for a moment, and then you can hit it again, and it goes back down. It's very nice for, like, quickly you want to see something, now you don't. Cool. So you can share it with friends. If you don't have friends, then pay me $5, I'll be yours. <laughs> Multiple cursors. I like doing this a lot. We'll wait till this thing re recycles. Multiple cursors is great when you have a lot of things in a file you want to change at once. So for example, if you ever wanted to get a couple things out of package.json and do an npm install, what I did here is I pulled out everything out of my package.json that I wanted to npm install, and then I put it on a single line. So for example, I copied all three of those lines, moved it to a new file. I then looked for everything that had a quote, colon, quote, hit the command, the multi-cursor, deleted everything after it, deleted everything before it, went down a line, backspaced, hit space, went to the beginning, typed npm install, and you're there. And I know I went through that fast, but basically any time you have a lot of code and you want to be able to edit a lot of things at once, the multi-cursor is your friend. You can do things in seconds that would normally take you hours. Has anybody ever given you like a comma delimited file and you had to change it into like a pipe delimited file or you had to change it into tab delimited or anything like that? 
You can take, you know, a 10,000 line file and do something like this in seconds. Really, really nice feature. They got this from Sublime, I think, and, and Vim were the first two I saw it in. Docker. We all like Docker, right? Dan convinced you all? Cool. Docker Dan's pretty awesome. So with Docker, who wants to memorize those commands that Dan showed us? You do. Awesome. I don't. <laughs> VS Code will remember them for you. So when you want to Docker compose, Docker run, Docker build, you can do that all through VS Code. Let me show you a quick example. I've got that Vikings app here. It's running localhost. Let's say it's running in the cloud, because it is. So here it is running in the cloud. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so in my app, let's say I wanted to rebuild this. I'm going to go change the toolbar component to say, clap if you enjoy Dan, Ward and Dan, and say, you know you didn't. All right. And then over here, I'm going to rebuild it. Now, I don't remember the docker compose command or anything, so I'm going to hit command shift P. I'm going to type docker compose up, up there. It's like, oh, that was the command. I'm going to hit enter. It's now asking me, do you want the debug version or the regular? Well, I want to go to production in Azure right now, so I'm going to hit enter. Down below, you can see it's building my thingy, which is technical terms for Angular. And it's going to rebuild it. And the longest step here in Docker is going to be rebuilding the Angular build process. It's doing a production build. I think it takes about 20 seconds. And once that's done, then I've got to remember, oh, wait a minute. After I do that, I have to tag this thing. Right, Dan? You've got to tag them. And then I've got to push it up to the cloud. OK, so I've got to remember those commands. And I have to somehow remember if it's Docker PS or Docker image or, or Docker, or, or just got to remember Dan's phone number, which I could give you all after this. So let's see if this baby will run. All right. There we go. So once it gets past there, it's pretty quick. It's recreating the image. Now, where's the image? Well, I could come over to terminal, and while this is running even, open another terminal and do, OK, I think it was like Docker PS dash. No, that's not it. it. Might be Docker images. And I try to read that. That's easy to read, right? So I don't want to go there. Instead. There's a Docker extension that you can get. It's free. And with that extension, you can see I've got my image up here. Vikings was recreated a few seconds ago. So, OK, that's the image. But I want to tag that with a tag to go to my Docker repository in the cloud. And mine happens to be Papa CR at Azure. You can also just go straight to Docker Hub. And I hit Enter. It automatically tagged it right there. Cool. So once I've tagged it, then I can right click that and say push. And then the push is going to run down below, and it's running through. And notice it's figuring out what it can push. It's saying which layers exist. Only the one layer was new, so it did that one. And then it builds, and it's done. And I did not have to memorize that. And then hopefully within about 10 seconds, I was timing it before. There we go. It's up in the cloud, and it's good to go. Uh, snippets. We all like to memorize syntax. I know you do. Uh, if you don't, you can use snippets for Angular, for React, for Vue. Uh, inside my Angular snippets, which is one of the links I put in here, there's over like 50 different snippets you can do. One of them happens to be a Docker file that I happen to use a lot for multi-stage Docker with uh, Node. You can also do things like memorizing the routing syntax. I know Warden, I hate that. We always can't remember like where does it all go and what's it look like. I have snippets for that. RxJS, sometimes it's hard to keep up with what those syntaxes are, especially when they're doing breaking changes. There's snippets in here for those things. Just makes your life easier. I use a ton of snippets for lots of languages. Quick fixes, love these too. If you ever see a light bulb inside of VS Code, what you'll see inside there is you'll see a light bulb with hints about what to do. So notice I've got the catch error down there. If I hit the light bulb, it'll say, hey, wait a minute, you forgot to import that, and it'll automatically import it for you. Nobody likes to go put imports at the top of the file. Let VS Code do it for you. If you don't like clicking on the light bulb with your mouse or trackpad, you can hit Command Dot, and it'll automatically do it. Refactoring. You can find references. You can rename symbols. You can peek into other code languages as well. The little peek thing brings up a window that not only shows you where this is located, but you can also edit it in line. 
right inside of the tool. Very, very cool. If you don't like the 10 extensions I showed you, there's 5,000 others that you can go play with up on the extension marketplace. Uh, a lot of really good ones. There's Python, C++, all sorts of good stuff up there. Uh, there's a bunch of really good Git ones. Call out the Git history is a fantastic extension. Uh, let me show you that one real quick. A lot of people are like, you know, I need to do more with Git. I don't really like how VS Code's Git, Git stuff baked in uh, works. By the way, this is the baked in Git stuff that you get. You get Git diffs. You can commit, you can push, you can merge, uh, you can create branches. All the basic stuff's built in. But let's say you want to find out how many times has John changed that toolbar file. If I right click on it and say vit, vit, yeah, git view file history, it's now going to show me I've never changed it, ever. That's fantastic. I think it's a liar. Let's try it here. There we go. At least this one's got two. There we go. So in this case, you can, you can see the two different changes. You can actually go and look at other branches. You can look by author. You can search for something. You can click on the commits. And you can go one at a time looking through those. Uh, there's also Git Lens, which you can look at, which shows you right in line who's changed it and when. There's a bunch of really cool Git extensions uh, that you can use. I never use Git tools anymore. It's actually, I've lost all of my Git foo. You know, you get like a badge for Git foo when you learn Git commands. I've lost it now. I just use VS Code. If you see, don't see something that you wish you had, make it. For example, I was talking with the creators of Stack Blitz the other day. They're going to be here this week. Great people. And I was like, you know what? I really wish there was a way, if I'm in VS Code, I could just right click and say create a Stack Blitz so I could share it with my friends. I don't want to push it to GitHub and move it over and do all this. Uh, so they are starting to build with the community a extension with StackBlitz with VS Code where you right-click your project and it uploads everything up to StackBlitz immediately for you. Uh, we can ask them this week how it's coming along. So really, great tools are going to make you better overall. Uh, I think VS Code is one of these. Uh, to me, it's made my life easier because it takes away all the boilerplate and plumbing that you can do out there. And the best part is, if something isn't working the way you want it to, you can just go make an extension. I've got about seven of them up there in the marketplace. Some of them are just for me, and some of them are, are used by the folks. Here's the uh, links again to everything I showed today. If you didn't grab a picture before, you can grab one now. Uh, a lot of these are uh, really popular ones that you can use. For example, if you go up to the marketplace, which I probably go to far too often, and you want to see, like, you know, which ones you should you use. For some people have downloaded my Angular snippets. They tend to like it. And then if you go look at other things that are out there, you just click on VS Code at the root. They'll put, like, featured ones up here, which is really nice. Uh, you'll see, like, how many downloads they all have. If you want to look at those, uh, Mr. Waleen has one in here. I think you can actually type in last names. And there's Dan. So Dan's got some awesome snippets up here you can go check out as well. Uh, there's testing, there's Azure stuff, there's Node stuff. Pretty much everything you do is in the marketplace. Uh, and the best part about VS Code is, again, once you go to VS Code itself, which you can do by going to code.visualstudio.com, when you click on the download, all you do is you pick, do you want stable or insiders? I can go click on it and say, hey, let me get stable. You download that, and you'll notice it's downloading down there at 66 megs, and in about 30 seconds, you've got the tool. Um, try that with Visual Studio. <laughs> so with that, I just want to thank you all for uh, sticking around tonight, and hopefully you had a good time with Ward and Dan and I. And thanks for having us.